So, hello, this is Marta. Actually, today I, I, I got to meet my friend Lance. Yes, I got to meet my friend Lance. This is my first time meeting him in person and he's a very kind man, seriously. I do talk with him on phone, like on phone, on WhatsApp, but I've never got to meet him. But today, he's just extraordinary. He's very, like, anything you want to know about life, anything you want to know about just him on, just like anything you want to know about life please youtube telegram instagram twitter all the social media channels you got to find him there he's very inspiring he's very positive if you want anything positive about life please subscribe to landscape and then every day you got to see different videos different talks different topics about life see you thank you martha Welcome everyone to another episode of Lance Curve. I'm going to be churning them out rapid fire. I scheduled this for another time, but I pulled it back. I feel good and you'll get it if you missed it. Not that that's an attitude or anything like that, but I just have so much content that I want to put out there. And there's so many topics that we need to talk about on a real level. You know, last night, the question was posed to me about the whole T.D. Jake situation. I'm kind of laying back in the cut and I'm watching what's going on. I don't want to be one of those guys who just jump for the clicks and jump for the views. I'll sit down and let everybody shoot their load. And if I can add something specific and add something unique to that conversation, I'll definitely do so. But I'm not just going to jump on the bandwagon that way. You know, we start in many communities across different social media platforms and I'm ready to take it on. 2024 is here. 2023 is done with. Take the trash out. Leave it in 2023. And let's move forward even stronger. This is what you have to do. No matter what you're facing right now in this life, face it and let's move forward. You know, what do they say? What does the saying go? Uh, the first step, a thousand mile journey begins with the first step. So here we are, beginning of a new year. And I hate to say it that way because every day is the first day of your, your your personal new year. And that's how I feel about it. But um, there's a lot of good things we have to talk about. There's a lot of crucial and important things we have to talk about. And my thing now is going within and cleaning up the trash that we have within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we're trash, but, you know, in this world, the way it is, along the way, we pick up all kinds of things that clog our filters. And we have to be really truthful with ourselves. Forget about everybody else. Forget about trying to impress other people. Forget about what other people think about you. Look within and, and try to correct what's inside of you. And we know it too, because we kind of bury it. We know it and we ignore it. Um, and that's not good because if we don't take care of ourselves now internally on how we think, how we feel about things and correcting our views toward reality, because lots of times we're living in a false reality. Like we spoke about last night, but the whole mind control and, and how they have us fear mongering and how we're going to just assume the position. We can't live like that. We have to be proactive and we have to grab, you know, the handlebars and steer the bike where we want it to go as opposed to just say, OK, I'm not going to participate in life. I'm just going to go with the flow. I don't want to be a rabble rouser. No, stay true to yourself. If, look, if you got a pebble in your shoe, is it bothering anybody else? No. It's only bothering you. You understand? So we have to deal with that pebble in the shoe and take the shoe off temporarily, no matter how embarrassed, embarrassing it is. You might have a hole in your sock. So what? They see the hole in your sock, but you got the pebble out because ain't nobody perfect. You know what I mean? Yes, the title of today's show, <laughs> Lost Behind the Prison of Their Masks. I could have said lost behind the prison of our masks, but many people say, well, I don't have a mask. It's almost mandatory that we have a mask these days to deal with this stuff outside. It's almost like when you want to fry eggs, but you got to put some oil or some butter so the eggs don't burn. And we think that, but I'm going to deal with things without the oil or without the butter in my life. I'm going to deal with it head on. You understand that's the only way to go. I'm going to read off something really quick. And like I said, apply this to yourself. I'm not throwing off on anybody who's going to listen to this. I'm not throwing off on anybody. If anybody, 
I'm throwing off on me. I want to chisel away the, the, the things that clog my filters. That's, that's one of the things I'm looking to do and deal with me, perfect me, and make myself a better version of myself every single day. But at the same time, I'm not going to take any trash from anybody around me. I'm not doing it. I'm not here to baby, babysit. And you're not here to babysit anybody else's idiosyncrasies, which is going to cause you to lose a lot of false friends. Because people come around you with their masks and they have an agenda. Not everybody. But if you're not busy working on something of your own, and sometimes we can feign working on stuff and working on myself. And I have no time for this because I'm working so hard on this. But even that can be part of the mask. That can be part of the hustle. We have so many people out here who are like that. So we don't have time to even try to figure these folks out. Work on yourself. You can never go wrong. That's the bottom line. Work on yourself. You can never go wrong. Even if you have a mask and you realize that you have one as a defense mechanism in life because of the way you were brought up and raised or things that happened to you in your childhood, the younger years, your formative years, even behind the mask, work on it. These are things we have to do. Now, for me, it's 9.07 here, uh, a.m. in West Africa, in Ghana. And um, so now I know that it's 4.07 on the East Coast of the United States. So I know the few people that are here, either you've been up all night or you're up extra early. So I don't expect much of a chat room for this particular segment until a little later on. When the show's over, there will be no chat room. It'll just be comments. So that being said, since we're working with a skeleton crew right now, I'll get right into reading what I wanted to read. A little bit of it I wrote. A little bit of it came from other places. But the main thing is the message that comes through. And it won't be too popular because we don't have half-naked women on a banner or some foolishness or some, some Negro business. That's okay. I want to I be with the real. I want to deal with the real people who really want to roll up their sleeves and put the work in on making themselves better. But these people, this, this reading will identify those around us and hopefully not us, maybe us. But nevertheless, the medicine is always good. In a world where authenticity is increasingly valued, there exists a subset of individuals who hide behind a labyrinth of masks, presenting a facade that shields them from their true selves. These individuals, often driven by deep-seated insecurities and a fear of vulnerability, craft elaborate personas that may appear confident and brash, but crumble upon closer inspection. Oh God, we know a lot of people like that now, don't we? We're delving into the reasons behind the creation of these false personalities. Explores pers personality types prone to adopting such behaviors and examines the scenarios where their toxic traits emerge. Ooh, Scenarios where their toxic traits emerge. Isn't that something? That we have people out here who, in certain scenarios, it's like squeezing the toothpaste out of the little tube. You think you don't have any more toothpaste left over, but sometimes you squeeze hard enough, you'll see what's left inside. Sometimes you have sugar at the bottom of the iced tea and you think that it's sweet enough. And as you get closer to drinking down toward the sugar, it gets more sugary. You see what's there. You see, when I read something, sometimes and oftentimes, these things jump out at me. Like, okay, the scenarios where their toxic traits emerge. I can say that over and over again. And it's crazy. And like earlier in this paragraph, fear of vulnerability craft elaborate personas that may appear confident and brash, but crumble upon closer inspection. A lot of us, we front. A lot of us, we feel as though, oh, God black, thank you, thank you for being here. I will, and I always will keep up the work. I will. I live this. This is not an attention grab. This is not a popularity contest for me. This is something, look, I'm just sharing what I think and what I feel. And I can put out a whole lot of content out there that would get a lot of, you know, I was approached the other day by a young lady again. Right. And many people know my face out here from just being 
online and stuff just pops up out here in Ghana. So this well-built young lady came up to me. She says, oh, just like the other two the other day, you have wonderful equipment. I see you have cameras in there. I say, yeah, but I'm just doing a lot of live streams these days. I'm focusing on some other things, building it up. Well, can you help me with my page? I said, what kind of page you have? Only fans. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I can easily shut this down. And with all of the resources out here that are well shapely and beautiful and that have approached me, I can run that way. You know, not to get off the topic, because I always do a little monologue before I do the show. There are a lot of people out here that this is not the poor place that they try to portray with hungry little kids with flies flying around and ribs sticking out. No, there's a lot of food out here. There's a lot of things growing. You know, there's a lot of people out here eating, right? But the economy is tight now. The exchange is not so good for many people who are not skilled. And so we have a lot of young ladies, and y'all can imagine when you go on TikTok and you see them shaking their backside and they're trying to get money off TikTok, it's not going to happen. You need a lot of hits, right? So a lot of women have discovered that they can um, share the visuals of their body or the whole uh, uh, process of procreation. I'm trying to say it nice. And so they're turning to that now. They're realizing that they can do this and, and, and share their intimacies and, and get paid. And so this is where I've been approached. And it's sad. You know, um, there are a lot of people who are doing that. And there's a huge, how can I put it? Influx of individuals willing to trade in their integrity for the little money that comes with displaying themselves. And I think it's sad. And that's where they're trying to steer us to keep us on a lower vibration. I mean, that's off topic, but I just had to say that. And I'll, I'll, I'll speak more about that. Um, there's some unique things that I want to do with some of the shows coming up. And um, this format is just going to get better. But it's always going to be about something that we need to talk about in our world, aside from the foolishness and the sensationalistic stuff that's out there, you know, created to distract us. You know, the roots of false personas, okay? I'm just gonna go down a few points here and I just wanna speak about it and add my two cents. This is not gonna be a five hour show today. I try to shoot for an hour or less, but um, this had to be done. I had to, I woke up and I'm like, ah, I gotta do this. I know I scheduled it for a later time, but I gotta do this right now. The roots of false personas, insecurity and fear of rejection. Many individuals construct false personas as a defense mechanism against their underlying insecurities, the fear of being rejected or judged for their authentic selves leads them to create a mask that shields them from potential criticism. This is so true. It's a defense mechanism against underlying insecurities. So oftentimes I've found that when you meet people at gatherings, you meet people, in a public way or semi-private and they're just meeting you for the first time, you may not be meeting their real selves. They construct these personas like a, like a kind of a condom to protect them, you know, kind of a shield, you know, because they're watching you. And this happens with men and women uh, in different ways, <laughs> vast ways, but I can only speak from my own experiences, you know? And what I've found is that with a lot of men, let me narrow it down, right? I've met men who knew of me from before. They might have followed me, or maybe their wife followed me on social media and they were introduced to what I do. And this is not a me, me, me thing. I'm just using my example because I can only go on that. And then you meet them and then you meet a false persona in that man. And I found that there's a lot of envy in areas that some of these men are not proficient in. And the persona of being friendly and being your brother and supporting you often turns around to them despising you because they may not communicate as well 
that's not for me to say. Or there's something that you are in your spirit, in your energy that reveals to them who they are even more so, even though they've lied to themselves about their own toxic personality. So in order for you being yourself, not even trying to go after someone, they will go after you first because they are upset now that they will probably be within close proximity because of maybe a business deal or you're working as a team on a project and they're so upset about what they lack that they have to attack you because they fear that they're going to appear to be inept. That's a very specific situation I just wanted to throw out there because I'm dealing with that now. So these kind of people, when they see you, and this could be male or female, they will greet you. They will, they will have a minimal amount of good words to say to you, but they'll kind of stay away from you now because you intimidate them. And I, I'm not trying to say I intimidate anybody. I'm just saying that we all are good at something, right? And if you're good at something, right, and you know it, we all are good, but we all have not discovered it yet. Some of us didn't discover what our really great talents are yet. And don't let it be where you have multiple talents and abilities. You're going to find yourself walking alone because you're not going to feel too comfortable around these people who are hell bent on tearing you down because of their own insecurities. And this is sad. And if in Shaka, well, you riding, you riding with us. <laughs> ah, Dominican Republic in the house. Yes, yes, yes. As you come in, let's let's do a roll call. I know where you are in the venture, but still say it anyway. And God black and whoever else comes on in, right? So this is sad because we almost have to treat each other like two boxers who don't know each other's fighting style. And for the first round or two, we have to figure out their style. Yes, Dominican Republic in the building. We have to figure out their style. And it takes a little time because we can't go on what they present to us initially. And this goes with everybody. And it's sad that we live in a world like that because I remember growing up seeing more sincere people. And I was a child, of course. But I have to also say my parents picked quality people to be around and still sometimes were disappointed because of the circumstances that arose that showed you signs of them that they had well hidden because of their insecurities. Listen, for those who may have some insecurities, you got to understand, we all have some insecurities. It's only human. You weren't born into this world perfect. We all have some insecurities. So let's get to work on them. Even, and it's not where, oh, you're supposed to just tell the whole world your insecurities. We feel maybe bad about our insecurities, but you have to stop comparing yourself to other people because you're always going to come up short here or there. You may feel dominant in some areas. But this is not a competition. See, when the sperm is released and it's heading toward the egg, they're not looking sideways. They're trying to get to that egg. And there's millions of sperms running toward that egg. We have to understand that. So you're defeating yourself when you look sideways and try to compare yourself. And I know when you're younger, we do that. We try to see how we measure up. But that should be only something that only lasts for a short time in our developmental years. Before we say, hey, I'm not the best, I'm not the worst, but let me get better. We all can get better. And there should be no reason to come up with these false personas in order to navigate life because you'll never grow. What if I went to the gym when I was doing bodybuilding and put on a suit that made it look like I had muscles and walked around, didn't train, didn't work out, I would have never got muscles. You see what I mean? Face the fact that we're all here to improve. We all can get better. And we weren't born complete like that. This is, this is 
uh, like I always say, this life is a placement exam for eternity. Like what you do in these few years, I'm not talking religious stuff, but it's a placement exam for the next level. So what you do now determines what's going to happen later on. And we have things to work on. And instead of acting like we don't have things to work on, let's work on it so we can be in a better place when we transition. That's what it should be all about. Nobody wants to think about that, but really that's what it should be all about. And there are levels behind that and levels behind that. We came from somewhere else. And we didn't want to leave, evidently, because we came in here crying. We didn't know this place. And it was scary. And over time, you figure out things over the years. And now you've mastered this creation. Hopefully, you've mastered enough of it to be able to graduate. But insecurity doesn't do anything to help elevate you to be ready for the next level. Let me get on to the next point. Lack of self-awareness. Some people may lack self-awareness, making it challenging for them to connect with their genuine emotions and values. In an attempt to fit societal expectations or gain approval, they adopt personas that align with perceived social norms. Well, how do you spot these people? Every time the wind blows, every time there's a new fad, they're trying to do it. Now, there's some people who are into fashion and into what's going on. But when it's something chronic, we're just like, well, they get a little too old for this. And of course, it doesn't mean, you know, when you get old, you're supposed to wear your granny panties or have your belt lined up under your nipple as a man. And oh, I'm just old now and I can't do anything else. No, no, it's, it's cool to be fly. You know what I mean? Fly meaning up to date, modern, aware of yourself that way. But when the wind blows and this person changes their perspective, and you know, the funny thing about it, I'm going to address it right now, head on. You know, oh, I'm just checking the chat room now. Um, back in the day, 43, brother says, uh, oh, I said brother. I don't know if it's brother or sister, okay? So please don't take that as an insult. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love listening to your show, Lance. You're like that family member, relative or parent who is knowledgeable, who sits down and passes the gift of wisdom. Thank you. And thank you for being here. And um. Denver, Colorado in the house. Wow. Yes. And every show we do, every time everybody comes in, you know, for, for the new people who are watching, let them know where you're coming from and rip it out because you never know who's watching or listening. There may be some people in your town and you never know a connection could be made. But, you know, this is the thing back in the day. I never, you know, prop myself up as being this guy who knows all this stuff. And I do thank you for the compliment. I understand where you're coming from. But I think we have too many people they get online and they want to be that source. They want to be, the, and, and not for the right reasons. Like, see, I'm sitting, I'm reading off stuff, but I'm talking. There's no script other than what I wrote and a few things I copied and pasted. Because if you're real about stuff, you don't have to have a script. So yes, I, I, I will accept that. I'm that dude who will sit down and pass on what I know. I, I'm no, there's things I'm still trying to learn. There's things I'm still learning. So I don't know everything, but what I do know, I'll share. And if I can't get an answer, I'll say, hey, I need to check this out. I need to go ask some people because they're people who feed into me. And I reflect and bounce off to you and everyone else what I've learned. There's some brilliant people who follow this platform who have taught me a whole lot. I'm going to be very honest and say it. Lots of times they say, listen, you don't have to mention my name. I just want to pass this on to you. So if I have any shine... It's because of the people who feed into me and all my life who have fed into me. And sometimes I'm off on certain things. That's why I won't say I have to meditate on certain things. And when it's from the hip and from the heart, that's why I can say it like it is. And some people are not always going to agree with me. I understand that. But this is not a drama channel anyway. Yes, yeah, some people say, oh, here's this platform and I got to come after him. And yeah, okay, do what you want to do. I'm not paying that no mind. Like I said, we leave the trash in 2023. And we move on. Even to the day that you transition, you should be seeking to improve yourself because we have so much time out of this realm, so much time off of this level. When was the last time you thought about your third grade classroom? You're out of there. 
You went to the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, high school, whatever, maybe college. You've passed through those places. There's no need to go back. Once you've acquired the lessons on each level that you're supposed to acquire, deja vu, welcome, shalom. Shalom. <laughs> I said shalom. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. You know, even though it's much earlier in the U.S. right now, you know, at 9.26 a.m. here in Ghana, it's still early for me because I went to bed after doing a show. I got up doing a show. I like it like that. I do have a few things I have to do today, but I want to wake up and just get these things out of my soul, out of my spirit, you know, and we're going to do some stuff later on a little earlier, you know, and uh, the clubhouse I was supposed to do, I didn't do, but join me there on clubhouse. Because I definitely, since starting out early, I'm going to do some, some talking over there where you can join in a little easier without going on the screen here. And you're welcome to come in here if you want to add anything. And toward the end, after I finish the dialogue, you're always welcome. Just say, hey, give me the link. You can come in. As long as you're respectful to the people listening, I have no problem with that. You know what I mean? But yeah, that lack of self-awareness, feeling around for what's going on around you to blend in. Look, I want to be like those old men who had a wardrobe and no matter what the fashion was, I'm sticking with what I wear. You know, those older guys who they had their wardrobe, like a classical wardrobe, a traditional thing. I'm not here to tell people how to dress. They always had their black suits, ties, you know, conservative stuff, navy blue, whatever, certain the, sh the shoes, shiny, nice, whatever. And no matter how much people were wearing bell bottoms, and, and colorful print shirts, they weren't going for it. They had the hair cut a certain way. And when that was not out of style, but while the fads were going on, they didn't succumb to that. They'd show up at the party dressed as though they were going to a, a job interview or a business meeting or, or presentation. You know what I mean? And so now with those types, I'm not knocking people who wore different clothes when they were younger, you know, but you know, over the, the decades, fashions changed and whatever. I'm going to say it this way, and I'm really speaking to myself. I'm not speaking to anybody here. Who are the people who look stupid in the pictures when you looked at the old pictures? It wasn't that conservative guy who stuck with his wardrobe, right? Who wore what he wore, and he said, uh-uh, I'm not going to go off and wear this, whatever. But in the Caribbean, they call it bell foot pants, right? <laughs> Marshmallows or big shoes. Remember those in the 70s? Big, it looked like a marshmallow to heel two and three inches deep, soft, and you walk around and that thing would break off and you walk in like you got a limp. <laughs> Here's the thing. I always say this, you know, fads come and go, but principles always last. Now you can do what you want to do with fashion and stuff, but that was just an analogy. When you look at those old pictures from the 70s, the 80s, whatever, and you wore the faddish things, you didn't look too cool decades after, you know, the one who sticks with principle, the one who sticks. Hey, hey, listen, if you want to wear the crazy fashion, stick with that. You know, oh, wow. 326. I was 329 in Alabama. Wow. Wow. Either you all are up late or you all are up early. I kind of think it's up late. This is the so-called holiday season, which you know what it is, but I'm not I don't get down with that. But still with family and maybe taking a break from the job, you can celebrate life. It doesn't mean you have to sit here and go out, oh no, Christmas, if you look into it, it's, it's a pagan holiday. Ah, you don't always, see, people expect me to be that way, but after a certain point, folks should know. They didn't want to come preach to me and tell me, I say, listen, I'm past that phase. I understand that. Go on and talk to the people who, who don't know. Not that I know everything, but we know that. We got to get to a certain point where we know what we know, what we know, what we know. We don't have to go back with other people who are just acquiring certain knowledge. I want to say it this way. No insulted ladies, but it's just like a young girl who the prior year she had a cups. The winter was good to her. The hormones, the good food, she put a little weight. Now she has C cups and she wants everybody to see by her manner of dress that I have grown in a certain area. Listen, young girl, it's new to you, but it's not new to us. We, we understand what's going on. So there are people out there who will acquire certain knowledge that's decent, 
and good and, and edifying and strengthening to the community. But now it's new to them. And it's like, hey, everybody, y'all need to wake up. And you've been conservatively moving in your path of wisdom. You're like, listen, let me pull your coattail a little bit. This is something we already knew. Not to insult you, but, you know, we need you in the community. But go to those who need to hear what you have to say. You know what I mean? Not to be condescending to anybody. And there's ways to say it without making a person feel bad. But um, we have to get, not get rid of, but stay on the elevated level that we're on. And too many of us are so caught up in the false persona that we can't because it's like a glass ceiling. Because we're too preoccupied on how we come off. You know how our sisters do. Is my butt, my butt big? <laughs> we're looking at the mirror before you go outside. It's not big. It's shapely. It's a beautiful thing. Don't worry about it. You're not going to get any complaints. It is what it is what it is. Whatever we are, we are. Let's be realistic and chisel away again the things that clog our filters, the things, the things that keep us from navigating in the day smoothly. That's what I'm into now. Smooth. If I feel some type of apprehension or tension within, that's a call to meditation. No matter what, you can be you could be crossing the street on the double yellow line in the middle of rush hour traffic, the evening news cameras rolling on you or somebody else. But you got to have that way of going inside of yourself and being still and saying, OK, what is the issue here? Why do I feel this way? Is because my insecurities or is it? And see, a lot of us don't want to even admit that I got insecurities that they don't bother me. They used to bother me. And they're reduced now. And they're reduced because I've been working on them. Work on your insecurities to the point where it becomes a strong point. If you run away from it, it will only amplify in your perception. Don't run away from it. Face it. Face it. You'll feel so much better about yourself when you improve. It doesn't mean you're less than anybody. If anything, now nobody's better than anybody, but it means you're further ahead on your journey and your ascension because you're facing it. And when you have other people around you who are not facing it, they're, they're, they're sinking like in quicksand. It's swallowing them up. I don't want to live a life where my insecurities are swallowing me up. The best thing I can tell anybody is to face them. You see what I mean? Superficial validation. External validation becomes a driving force for those who lack a strong sense of self-worth. False personas are carefully crafted to elicit admiration and compliments, creating a cycle of dependency on external affirmations. The external affirmations, as far as I'm concerned, that's the fuel for these people, right? The affirmations, they need this external validation. And instead of doing what, what it is that they do, that becomes the sole purpose of what they do. Even if they're talented, you have some talented people. Let's just make it simple. So you take a singer, right? Male or female doesn't matter. And they're really good at singing. They're really good when they, people just like, wow, they, 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 I know they're going to belt this tune out. And they understand that they have a talent, but their souls are so hungry for the external validation where that becomes the driving force. And so with the talent mixed in with a little bit of insecurity, like it says here, false personas are carefully crafted. Where more, we don't see this anymore, anywhere else more so on social media. Carefully crafted. I, 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 words hit me so hard. Carefully crafted. Now me, I have carefully crafted how my social media platforms vibe with each other. You all know I have landscurve.com. You know I'm on Facebook and Twitter. And my, but, but, but the main thing for me is my website, my creations. Not running down social media to be the first to break this news, to be the first and look at me. I'm working hard. I know I work hard, but I can't even say I work hard. Work? This is joy. <laughs> this is joy. I got up. 
went to the back, cut a pineapple, ate the pineapple. It wasn't as sweet as I thought. You know how sometimes now it's like it's like a little bit on your throat, like not acidic, but it could have had a couple more days to ripen. But it looked that way. I got my eye on another one out there that's going to be next in a couple of days. But I got up and I had that kind of moment. I put my feet in the soil, looked up at the sun, got my download, feel centered with the universe. This comes from within. And when you know yourself and you know your value, you see, like it says here, external validation becomes a driving force for those who lack a strong sense of worth. I'm not, when I say I'm not changing, it doesn't mean I'm not evolving, but I'm not changing because the wind blew one way or the other. And as a person who does this stuff online, a lot of people have criticized and said, well, he's always agreeing with everybody that comes to his platform. What's the opposite of that? You want me to fight with everybody that comes to the, the platform. Hence, you have these drama platforms that are very entertaining. It's like world ride, the world, Worldwide Wrestling Federation, the fake stuff, right? We love to be entertained. But it's not that I agree with everybody. It's just that I try to find a common denominator. And as a person who hosts a platform, I'm not here to beat anybody up. I just want to hear what you have to say, which my silence does not mean agreement on all things, but it's not about me. And the platform bears my name and it's not about me. See, some people don't even know how to act when they get up on their own platform. I'm sharing this. I'm, I'm, I'm the maintenance guy who sweeps and keeps the floor clean. I'm the person who has uh, 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 the popcorn and the Coca-Cola out there and I'm here to serve you. I'm the hidden person who's cleaning the toilets I have to maintain the platform and maintain a place where people feel comfortable enough to talk. I'm not here to say, I don't agree with you. Get off my, no, no, no. If you, if you, if you cause in trouble now, a lot of individuals doing that. Don't go back there anymore. He's this, he's that. And it, that's their life. <laughs> Everywhere you look, they follow you. <laughs> uh, and they know they're toxic. Can't deal with it. Leave the trash in 2023. I left trash in 2022. You leave it in 2023. But you have to be able to deal on the real. And you have a vision for something and it's sincere in your heart. Don't let the need for validation change who you are at the core. That's the main thing. Oh, yeah, De Deja, Deja Vu. Yes, beautiful sisters. Yes, indeed. Look at that. And really, we don't celebrate our sisters enough, not just because of the outward beauty, you know, but there's something that resonates from within. Like these sisters, I look at them and it's not like, oh, you're lusting after all. No, but these are mine. These are my sisters. I love them. I don't know them. But look at the expressions, on the, especially the one in the middle. You know, I could... She's like, look, I don't even know her, right? But I can always, she's the kind of woman I could do some embarrassing, like, listen, sister, please, I just went into the bathroom. There's no toilet paper. Please, can you get the toilet paper for me? Okay, honey, okay, baby, I got you. That universal way that we can communicate, we can trust. I'm not saying the other two can't. They might run and go tell on me. <laughs> I don't know. But what I'm saying is that this is why we are set up, and this is another topic, but this is why we're set up to come against each other because there's some other people out there that don't like us being together, unified, even if we don't agree on everything, but finding that common denominator. They want us, and this is why they use social media. They've given us this thing to split us up. And those people who want to see the destruction of our family don't want to see us together. Doesn't mean we have to meet and always lust and try to get somebody in the bedroom. You can love a woman so many different ways. None of that has to come into play. But the true love from your heart can under, undergird a community. But they know I can trust this man. He has my back. He ain't going to act this way, nice and everything, and turn around. Hey, 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 girl, you know what's really up. No. When it's like that, be up front. Let them know. 
Listen, I'm doing this sincerely from my heart, but I also happen to be very attracted to you. I'm going to let you know that. But don't think that the things I'm doing for you is only because of that. Because whether things go to the next level or not, I'm still going to love on you. Sincerely. Now, I told you that. If there's a chance of me and you taking it to a different level, gradually, that's on you. Right? So there's ways to communicate certain things. But the main thing is the authentic love, not this fake love because you have a hidden agenda or secret motivation. That's sick. That's twisted. Again, deal with the real. Be honest. You can't ever go wrong with being honest. Back in the day, left a bigger comment here. Let me see. I'm thankful that your show is one of the rare shows on the net that are for our people who are the thinkers, the realists, and for the folks who sometimes appreciate the great old days. No tomfoolery. Oh, God, man. I, I'm glad that you even said that. I'm glad that you even said that. This is not about me now. Thank you for the compliment. It makes us feel good, right? But that's the real thing. And it's not like you're lying or it's not like I'm lying. Look at the body of work. Let it speak for itself. I don't have to, like these, I don't like the new people who come on social media, right? But years ago, I went to uh, uh, Dr. Issa Vibrant. White Muhammad. This was 2014. We've known each other for a long time, 11 years, right? And he invited me to Fort Pierce, Florida. And Brother Akbar Muhammad was there speaking. And eventually I had the pleasure of having him come to my home in Orlando. We did that little short videotape because they had time to kill before they had to hit the airport. So Vibrant called me and said, Brother Lance, <laughs> you know, you got a little time? I said, of course, for you. I was in the bed sleep, but I got up quick, you know, like Biggie Small says, wipe the cold out my eye. <laughs> I showered quick, had my studio there ready, my little room with the black and the yellow stripes, which, are, which is coming back. You're going to bring back that classic look. And um, we dealt. But it was an honor, you know, and just be authentic. And trust me, there's a lot of BS I've had to deal with on this show. The people that have their, they got their little cash app agendas. They got the, uh, I'm going to come around there just, just to, just to get more followers. And, 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 and I don't care. My life continues on. My experiences will continue to be shared, but you're, you're right. Thinkers and the realists and appreciate the great old days. And I also have to say by what I wanted to bring also was to maintain the great old days. Remember years ago, we had a, a white man on, it was on uh, Channel 9 in New York City. I don't know if it was national, I don't know if it was local, but it was a local show in New York City, the Joe Franklin show. And he was mad corny, but he spoke of the nostalgic things for a certain faction and group of people. And I know this man was Jewish, but he, his name was Joe Franklin, so I know he had a different name. But they dealt with their community that way. They, they had, um, they had uh, actors and performers and the creative people and, and people who are in different, you know, religion and politics, but it wasn't a religion politics thing because they kind of stayed away from that. But they did have some people where they can talk about back in the day. And they weren't famous, famous, famous people. But they were people who held a place in their world years past. And we forget sometimes how much time has gone by. A dear close friend of mine texted me yesterday and said, Lance, isn't it something? It was a long text. I just capsulize it. We met when we were so much younger. And look at it now. You're 60. And it hit me. Not because, oh, I'm getting old. I'm 60. In 10 years, I'm 70. That does not bother me. I am energy. I am 60, but I am energy. So when anybody ever tells you, oh, you getting older, you 75, well, I'm energy. See the battery that you purchase, right? Those little batteries that power our stuff. Try to get the ones that are rechargeable. They go a little longer. You pay a little more. But whatever battery you use, you got to understand. When you buy the battery and sit it down, it may sit for two years before you pull it out to use it. Or you have another battery that you've been using 
that you just bought and it drains down. See, that two-year-old battery may be full. That new one that you just purchased might be done in a week's time because of usage. Like I say, it's not about the chronological age. It's about how you've preserved your youthful energies. Energies, y'all, it don't mean you ain't going to get a gray hair. It don't mean you're not going to get a, you know, just an ache, ache of pain or realize you're getting older because the body is subjected to the elements. But we really are supposed to go on longer than what we are supposed to go on with, right? But we don't take care of ourselves lots of times. And it's a stressful world. I understand that. But it's the youthful energy that you maintain. I mean, you vibe with other people. See, <laughs> what would I look like? And I've interviewed all kinds of people. I've interviewed strippers and people in the sex industry, white women who secretly sleep with black men. I do shows like that because it's entertaining and I want to know how the other and other types of people think. And I'll be bringing back those type of shows also. But not for sensationalism. Let's have a talk. You can hide behind the banner. I'm not going to reveal who you are. If you want to show your face, fine. But, but, but let's arm ourselves with knowledge on how other people think and how they got to the point that they got to. It's not always going to be a circus sideshow type show. Because this is a real conversation we're having here. You see what I mean? That's the bottom line. That's right, Infant Shaka. Let me put these comments up here. But thank you so much back in the day. Thank you so much. Beja Vu says, yes, embrace each other. Silence sometimes speaks louder, positive than negative, right? So Anafin Shank also said, the physical body ages, the soul is everlasting. Yes. Yes, you're not a body. We're in a body. We all know that by now. I mean, we're in a body if, if we, you know, bash our shin on the coffee table, <laughs> it's going to hurt. But we understand that we're having this experience. We're spiritual individuals having an experience. And in that experience, we can talk about the past doesn't mean we're living in the past. It's a difference. We can, we can take the joy, the collective joy that we experience from the past and, and, and let it help us move through whatever it is the challenges are. It's a doggy bag of happiness. You see? Well, you could talk about back in the day and, and back in the day, that's, uh, you, you're really about it back in the day because that's your name here <laughs> back in the day. But of course, you don't refute or reject the present joy because we're living back in the day right now because we're using that kind of energy that's rare now. Now people are off the chain. They're looking for attention. They're insecure or, 